final round. Right here in the final round, WWE should bring back Rikishi into the Bloodline story to help administer solace within the faction. Brother Hugh, how do you feel about this one with the statement at hand when it comes to the Bloodline? Are you in or are you out on this one? Uh, I think I'm in on this one. I'm going to start off by saying uh, the Bloodline situation is is crazy, and I'm honestly (laughs) tired of trying to figure out what's going to happen next, but... I would like to see uh, Rikishi in there um, to to bring some order to the whole situation. Um, being that he possibly could be one of the, the the elders that sent Solo in the first place, we still haven't really touched base on why Solo was sent, or you know what's his real purpose. But um, yeah, I just think it adds a little bit more intrigue to the whole situation because right now we're going back full circle with Jay and Roman again. It's it's a different story being told, but do we really want to see that again and again? And what's going to happen afterwards? After this, the Summer Slam. So I think it just adds a new element if you bring in Rikishi. And you get so many different opportunities to tell a different story right after that. So I mean, yeah, I'm in with it. You bring some great points to that, and I've I've tossed this back and forth through before this show and even during this show. And the biggest thing that comes to my mind is this is a debate show, and I gotta debate you, and I gotta disagree with you at some point. And this Sir. time is now, and I'm gonna say I'm out. Oh, yeah. Y'all should have known that at some point this was going to happen. Let me talk to you. That time is now. Because when it comes to this situation right here in the bloodline, this has been one great story. Mm -hmm. Of course, if Vincent Kennedy McMahon was fully writing the story, Rikishi probably would have been back a year ago. And he probably would have ruined the story. And the story would be over. And there would be no story right now. If Vincent Kennedy McMahon had his entire fingerprints all over this story. Now, when you look at it in a hole and you look at it and you think about Rikishi, yes, he has produced some great talent within that family of bloodline, and they have done some great things within this story. Mm-hmm. They've done it without him is the greatest part of it. They have needed him or to bounce off of his fame in order to help propel the story. I feel like if you bring Rikishi into this, you're taking away from that organic feel that has come from this story in this millennial era, okay, in in this new in this new era of wrestling. They did all this on their own. They didn't need the elders. Of course, the one point when you did have the the scene of the elders and passing the torch to Roman when he first was becoming the tribal chief or whatnot, right. you needed that for that element of the story. Right. But if you have Rikishi come in to restructure the bloodline and you're stepping on the toes of the current tribal chief. So if you have Rikishi come in, and in this whole thing, this is it could hurt the storyline in a way, if you think about it to that way, because, again, they've created this organically while using some things from the past to stay connected within that bloodline, but they haven't needed the, the past lineage. They haven't had to rely on that to get to where they're at today. They're on a completely different level than everybody else that was in that that lineage previously if you take the rock out of the equation the rock's the only one that the bloodline hasn't surpassed yet now as far as wwe storyline consistently on television i feel like they've surpassed him with that part of it because the rock didn't have like a consistent like three-year storyline that was the same storyline going on three years within wwe creative they've surpassed him as a talent professionally in the world, financially and everything too, with what he's done in Hollywood, <laughs> they have they're no even close to him. To him. <laughs> they're nowhere even close to him. But they could be getting some advice from him if you if you think about it too, with with and they're getting advice from probably the elders and everything too on different levels, storyline wise and outside of it as well to help get them to this point. But they they don't have to step in to make it happen. That's why the whole rumblings in the dark of Roman facing the Rock. Yeah, it would be cool, but it doesn't actually have to happen, at least at this point, because they're building the storyline organically and great on their own, which is why I feel like it would take away from it if they bring in Rikishi, because it might soil over the actual whole storyline of the Tribal Chief, even though the Usos have been doing that on their own over the past few weeks. Right, right, right. So my question is, after SummerSlam, after we get this match, what's next? What's your prediction? You know, 
some people have been saying that Solo could turn on Roman at, at SummerSlam. You Ooh. know, I don't think I think that you know Jay might win, but it might be through DQ or something to where Roman still keeps the belt. Mm -hmm. You know, to where he still gets the clout from the win or whatever, or some type of reversal will happen. But Solo could turn on Roman, you know, could happen too. But, you know, just like we were talking about earlier in the show, they've got so many members of the family that are out there on the independent scene. Yes. They could bring somebody else in. There's some big names out there that could definitely part, you know, they could definitely be factors within that storyline to help it continue, at least until WrestleMania. Um, right. But it could potentially go longer than that. It depends on what they want to do with it. Like, I just I don't see anything that can, I can't call anything significant at this point exactly. unless yeah. unless The Rock comes and says I'm going to face you at WrestleMania or something. But is he really needed? He's I mean, not, maybe not right now, but will he ever really be needed? He might not. But I mean, when you think about the fact they've got the Hollywood writer strike right now, and it, you know, and that's ah. affecting acting and stuff too, because there's not really much things getting made there unless you're doing some things independently. Right. You know, when it comes to that situation, The Rock's got some extra free time they normally wouldn't have. And right. definitely, you know, get a few bucks by coming back into WWE and they could find some way creative for him. But I I, I don't think you can jumpstart that process in a couple of weeks of writing it in there and right, make it right. to where it's beneficial. Whatever's going to happen has been planned out for quite some time. So even if that does happen, then this has been in the works for quite some time behind the scenes and discussions have been made even before the writer's strike, potentially that they planned for that to actually happen because right. they pre plan a lot of this stuff in advance. There's not right. really much that's changed on the fly unless your name is VKM and you show up and you don't like what they have and you change it on the fly after they've been planning it for six months. Two seconds before you walk through the gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it is, it is 7.59 and 30 seconds Eastern time, and we got 30 seconds before we go live, and VKM walks in there strutting and says, you're not going to do that opening monologue. You're going to do this. So the talent has now 11 seconds to learn a two-minute speech. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh, man. VKM, people, there's so many people that I know are doing this. <laughs> 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 just laughing so hard at that lady on the right hand side she laughed <laughs> so hard like it right. just looks uncomfortable to watch her laugh like she tried a little too hard for that one but that's how i feel about vkm and his attempts to keep up with the taste society and it's definitely not working so if first you yeah. don't succeed you try and try again eventually if you keep failing like a hundred times in a row you gotta stop you gotta get off the rod it's time to hang it up Absolutely. like jim ross but when it comes to this bloodline story you got a great take on it, and I was, I was hoping you would go out so that way I could talk a little bit about what you. Yeah. But unfortunately, I had to be the one to disagree with the other person in a different way that maybe isn't the most favorable. But right. we had to have one topic on this show today where we really like that, and I had to. Right. It's part of the show. It's part of the fun. Sertoba Media, where the struggle is real to be awesome.